If you would, go with me, please, to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Let's look at verse number 1. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Now, the leper knew that Jesus could heal him, but he was questioning his willingness. Many people today question the willingness of God. Well, Lord, I know you can heal me, but many people question but will you, Lord? Jesus Christ is the same today as He was yesterday, right? The Word of God says in Malachi 3.6, I am the Lord, I change not. Hebrews 13.8, Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. So I want you to notice something. Look. At that verse 2 again. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Many people today are just like the leper. They question his willingness. He's willing to heal you. He's willing to answer your prayer. He's willing. But many people are uncertain. Well, I don't know if the Lord would do it for me. If He did it for one, He'd do it for you. Amen. Look at verse 3. And Jesus put forth His hand and touched Him, saying, I will be found clean. And immediately His leprosy was cleansed. Jesus said, I will to the leper. He is saying, I will to you too. <clears throat> let's, move, let's remove all doubt. Let's remove all unbelief. Let's remove all uncertainty. It is God's will for you to be healthy. Yes. Amen. Spiritually, mentally, and physically. God wants you to be healthy in all three of those. Spirit, soul, and body. Jesus is not a respecter of persons. What he has done for one, he will do for another. Let's go on reading in verse number 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. Look at verse 7. I will come and heal him. Jesus is eager and willing to heal you this morning. He's compassionate and he's merciful. Jesus said, verse 7, and Jesus saith unto him, I will again, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Why was that great faith? Because the centurion only wanted the word of God. What do you and I have? The word of God. What are we to believe? The word of God. But Brother Dennis, these are my symptoms. That's the problem. You keep looking at your symptoms instead of the Word of God. What did the centurion want? Everybody else wanted to touch Jesus. Everybody else wanted Jesus to come with them. 
But this man says, Lord, just speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed, shall be made whole. So, so Jesus marveled. Speak the word only. <clears throat> what do you and I have? We have the word only. See, here's where we miss it. Well, Brother Dennis, I'm having symptoms in my body. Symptoms are real. But the Word of God is more real. Amen. 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 So his servant was healed because the centurion believed nothing. The centurion did not believe the symptoms his servant was having. The centurion believed the word that Jesus spoke above those symptoms. What are you believing? Well, whose report are you believing? The report of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Symptoms are real, but God's word is more real. Amen. God's word will drive the symptoms out and produce a healing. Look at verse 14 of Matthew chapter 8. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lay and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. Now Jesus is interested in the one as he is the many. Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. Is he the same today? Or has he changed? Does he love these people any more than he loves you? No. Look at verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. How many did he heal? All that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now Jesus is interested in the one as he is the many. Because in verse 16, and he healed all that were sick. All those that came to him that evening, he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, but he did not stop there. He healed the one. He healed all that evening till compassion led him to heal the whole human race on the cross. Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Yeah. Who bore your sickness? Jesus did. Are you looking at the Word or are you looking at symptoms? If you look to your symptoms, it will produce fear. Yeah. Oh. You look to your symptoms and you meditate on them. You will become fearful. But if you look to the Word of God, 1 Peter 2, 24, Matthew 8, 16 and 17, Isaiah chapter 53, Exodus 15, 26, Proverbs chapter 4, 20 through 22, and read the Gospels where Jesus healed. He had compassion on the sick. Jesus, let me say this. There are hindrances. The, the number one hindrance is unforgiveness. And the other one is sin. Now God doesn't go around healing you where you can live in sin. Amen. Sin is what brings ugly things into life, into our lives. Now don't get religious on me. Yes, there's tests and trials that you will have as a believer. But I'm talking about staying free from sickness and disease. 
There is an enemy that you have to resist. But sin will open the door for sickness and disease to come in. And until we repent and get right with God, then you and I, we cannot claim no healing until we are cleaned by the blood of Jesus. They overcame him according to Revelation 12, 11, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. You remember me mentioning the lady that had a rare disease many years ago? There wouldn't be about five or six people that medical science knew about. Well, when she forgave her brother, she repented and forgave her brother. See, forgiveness will set you free. Amen. Amen. Forgiveness will set you free. And when she forgave her brother, that disease left. So let me say this. Make sure all sin is removed out of your life. Because sin is an open door for the devil to come in. Amen. Make sure it's all removed. You know, like, you know, I, I, I'm traveling to church this morning. God, I repent. You know, I, I repent every day. Well, I want to make sure, have I been living a sinful lifestyle? No. But just in case something was there, I want to get under the blood. All right. Amen. Do you know of any sin? I couldn't think of any. But I was saying, God, I repent for all that I've said and done that's wrong. All that I've imagined, any bad thought. If I said anything about anyone and didn't repent, why? Man, I want God to know that I mean business with Him. I want to live holy before Him. I mean, the prophet said, Woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips. Think about the things that we say throughout the day. Did we say something that we shouldn't have said? What am I saying? Repent before God and live holy before Him. Amen? Well, Jesus has provided healing for the whole human race. Go with me to John's Gospel. But how do I obtain it? How do I receive it? By believing it. By believing the Word. The centurion believed nothing but what Jesus spoke. Amen? Amen. Are you believing the Word or are you believing circumstances, symptoms? If so, that your symptoms will move you into fear greatly. Amen. Let's believe the Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You quote the Word of God. And I'm not talking about you and I only quote one healing scripture. You quote them all throughout the day and you meditate on them and you feed them on them. Amen? You have to take God's medicine. Look at John chapter 4 real quickly. John chapter 4. Look at verse 46 of John chapter 4. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went up to him and he saw him that he would come down and heal his son for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. You know, there are some people that will not believe unless they see something or feel something. Now, Jesus was pretty blunt to this fellow, but Jesus helped him. Jesus said, except you see. You know, many people will not believe anything unless they see or feel something. The centurion, he didn't need to feel or see anything. He says, Lord, you just speak the word only and my servant will be whole. And what happened? Healing came. 
Let me ask you a question, and you don't have to lift your hand in here. What are you believing? What are you believing right now in your life? Are you just hoping something will happen? Are you believing in your symptoms, or are you believing in the holy, powerful Word of God? Amen. God's Word is holy, and God's Word is powerful. What has your attention? The circumstances, symptoms, to people that are pouring into you doubt and unbelief and that healing has been done away with today, or is that going into you? Or is God's Word going into you? Amen. Well, Jesus said in verse 48, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Many people will not believe unless they can feel that they're healed. <laughs> Many people will not believe until they feel better. But that takes no faith. No, that takes no faith. You would know it. You are to believe first. And then the feeling and the seeing comes. <laughs> You're going to need this. You might need it now. Listen to me. God's Word heals anything. doesn't matter what it is. Cancer, yes. tumor, headache, yes. sugar diabetes. It doesn't matter what disease it is. God's Word is the healer of every sickness and every disease. And as long as there is uncertainty concerning maybe your situation... There's a block. And all uncertainty has to be removed for God's power to flow freely. Amen? Let's go on reading in verse 49. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, my child is dying. Look at verse 50. Jesus said unto him, Now Jesus didn't go with him. Just like Jesus didn't go with the centurion. Jesus didn't go with his two. But look what Jesus said in verse 50. Jesus said unto him, Go your way, your son liveth. And the man believed what? The word. What did the man believe? The word. What do you and I believe? The Word. You have a brother Dennis, I'm having these symptoms. Believe the Word. Yes, Believe the Word. Eat the Word. Drink the Word. Feed on healing scriptures. You know what gets me? People say they want to be healed, but they really don't. They want it their way. People that want to be healed, they would stay in the Bible. They would read and feed on healing scriptures and they would worship God. The people that I've met in the past that say they want to be healed, they don't open the Bible up. They can't tell you where a healing scripture is at. And then they live like the devil lives. God does not heal people where they can live in sin. Amen? In the fifth chapter there of John, if you go read the very next chapter, we're in this fourth chapter with this no woman, but in the very next chapter, Jesus heals a man, finds him in the temple, and said, Sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. If you want to be healed, get sin out of your life and feed on healing scriptures. Love Jesus. Worship Him. Offer up thanksgiving. See, you are to offer up thanksgiving from the time that you pray and ask the Lord to heal you. And at that time of prayer, you are to believe that you received it at that moment. Amen. And from that time, you are to offer up thanksgiving. Thank you, Father, according to the Word of God, my body is healed. Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and whatever it is that you are needing healing for, Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for the healing of my body. 
You are thanking Him before you see it, before you feel it. Get the Word of God into you. Get saturated with God. You read 1 Peter 2, 24 religiously. Read Matthew chapter 8, verse 14 through 17. Amen? When the evening was come, they brought unto Him many that were possessed with devils, and He cast out the spirits with His Word and healed some that were sick. He healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself, Jesus Christ, took our infirmities and bear, B-A-R-E, and bear our sicknesses. Yes, thank you, Lord. If you read that religiously, till the Word of God becomes a part of your spirit, you will find yourself recovered. What does the Bible say in Mark chapter 16, verse 18? They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, here's where we missed it. They come down to the altar. They come down to the altar. They won't pray for them. They get prayed for. Well, it wouldn't instant. I guess it wasn't the Lord's will. Or the preacher didn't have it today. No, that's because you didn't receive it. It didn't say you were going to get an instant healing. Amen. Now we thank God we have seen those here. We thank God for that. He said, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Recover. The moment that you begin to believe that you received your healing from Christ is the moment that you begin to recover. Yes. It could be a day. It could be two. It could be a month. It could be two months. I don't know. Jesus said, according to your faith in the ninth chapter of Matthew, according to your faith, be it unto you. Yeah. I've heard of one lady that Smith Wigglesworth reading about laid hands on. She had a border. Smith Wigglesworth cursed it, laid hands on her, and she left out there, thank God I'm healed. Well, people that did not know about the walk of faith looked at her like she was crazy. A year went by, Essie, and she still had the quarter. All right. A year. And she says, Lord, thank you for healing me a year ago. Will you show the people now that I'm healed? And instantly it disappeared. Thank you, Jesus. So I don't know when your manifestation is to be manifested. All right. Only God knows. You know, you remember the lady that had the malignant growth? Cancers, they wouldn't operate on her. She received her healing at 940. 20 till 10. And she would go home. She didn't feel no different. She believed nothing but the Word of God. All right. Every day she would say, I believe that I received healing. What is she believing? That she has received healing. Not going to receive. Jesus said, believe that you receive and you shall have. Yes. She believed that she received healing for the malignant growth. The 10th day it fell off. Somebody says she got healed the 10th day. No, she got healed back at Calvary. She received it 10 days earlier. That's right. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. What are you believing? Hallelujah. Are you believing? Listen, Jesus loves you. Yes. Jesus loves you. He died on a cross for you. And he didn't die on that cross for you for you to be sick and for the devil to whip you up with sickness and disease. Now, are you hearing me? He died on that cross for the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. He redeemed the whole man. Amen? Jesus Christ is the Savior of the spirit and the body. Who are you here? Well, look, before we leave. Jesus said unto him, Go your way, thy son liveth, and the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. Now, when he went his way, you know the devil was right there trying to steal it. you got to rebuke doubt. Just because the doubt comes doesn't mean you've lost your healing. Just ignore the doubt. All right. 
Amen. And as he was now going down, the servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. What brought about the miracle? The man believed the word. Jesus didn't touch the man's son. Jesus didn't touch the centurion servant. Jesus didn't go with both of them. They both, they only believed what Jesus spoke out of his mouth. Here, what, look what we got. Woo -hoo. Look what we got to believe. Amen. Now go with me to Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14, real quickly. Look at verse 7 through 10. Acts chapter 14, verse 7 through 10. And there they preach the gospel. I wonder what they preach. They preach the gospel. They didn't preach religion. They didn't preach the theories and opinions of men and women. They preach the gospel. Amen. Amen, Jason. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak. What did Paul speak? And the Bible says they preached the gospel. He was hearing something. He was hearing the right message, the word of God. Who steadfastly beholding him, Paul, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. You mean I have to have faith to be healed? Yes, you do. You certainly won't be healed without unbelief and uncertainty. Come on, people. Can you go to heaven with doubt and uncertainty and unbelief, not believing in Jesus? It's amazing how the devil has robbed the church. Look at verse 9 again. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. What produces faith? Well, the man heard Paul speak the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, word of God Romans 10, 17. The Bible says in Romans 12, 2, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Many people in the church need their minds renewed with the word of God because their minds is so mixed up and thoroughly set with the opinions and theories of men and women. And that's a, there's a block. Many people think that healing's been done away with. And as long as you think that, you're not going to have faith to be healed. Look at the woman in the fifth chapter of Mark. The one with the issue of blood. She was the only one that got healed out of the multitude that was strong in him. Or Jesus would have never turned around and said, Who touched me? And the disciples said, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? They thought that was a silly question. Because they weren't getting anything, but they needed something, or they would not have been touching him. Only one got something, and that was the woman with the issue of blood that touched him in faith. Yes, faith is required. Faith is required for you and I to make heaven. Faith is required to be saved. To believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? You have to believe. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have to believe in Him and accept Him and follow Him. Well, real faith does follow Him. I mean, when I was in the bars in Pooh Hall, sipping and tipping and lusting, I mean, I believed in the Lord, but I wouldn't say it wasn't a saving faith. It was just a faith, yeah, I believe in the Lord. Well, the mafia believes in the, in the Lord. But a Bible faith is a changing faith. It changes your character. When Christ comes into you, you are changed when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, except when you accept Him as Lord and Savior. Your life changes. Well, you and I cannot go to heaven without believing. 
Why have we quit there? Why have we said, well, if the Lord wants to give me the Holy Spirit, He'll give it to me. If the Lord wants to heal me, He'll heal me. Everything else comes the same way. By faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. Well, look at verse 9. We're fixing to leave here. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy foot. And he leaped and walked. He was made, he was healed. How was the man healed? He heard the word of God preach. How are you and I going to be healed? It's not going to be watching ungodly television shows and reading ungodly magazines. It's going to be by you drinking the Word. Opening the Word of God and feeding upon it. If you want to be healed, that is. Somebody says, but what about I forget? No, you don't want healing from God then if you won't forget. Amen, Amen John. You and I should be feeding upon healing scriptures religiously. When you are getting ready, when you are driving, I mean, himself, himself, himself took my infirmities. Himself bear, himself took my infirmities and bear, bear my sicknesses. I quote first, I quoted first Peter, I don't know how many times, more than any other verse in the, in the Word of God. First Peter 2, 24. Smith Wigglesworth said, if you wait till you get sick before you start reading healing scriptures, you have waited too late. You should already be ready with them. Amen. There's nothing that the Word of God will not cure. Nothing. Amen. Well, I want to go on, but I don't want to lose you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So come back tonight we'll pick up. Here. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants you well. Amen. Jesus died for you. He's your Savior not only spiritually, but He's your Savior physically. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand. Blessed be the name of the Lord.